Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Whoa! Let me get the camera up. Yep, there you go. 2013 Chevrolet Cruze. Not limited to a 13, it's any 1.4 liter eco engine up to about 14. Thinking 15, they changed, could be wrong, doesn't matter, whatever. This is a 13. First thing I'm going to tell you is it's got a blown head gasket. Don't know if we can do it any good, but we're going to try. First thing I did, and if you don't feel comfortable doing that kind of that kind of stuff to a vehicle, don't do it. But first thing that I do is remove the hood. Makes it so much nicer because you got the light shining in it. You don't have to mess around with with knocking your your head into the light, whatever. I removed the battery and battery tray, and that of course has computer attached to it because we're gonna have to undo the hoses anyway. Uh, I haven't lifted it yet. Like I said, there is a few odd and end items I'm gonna take off. Like the air box is gonna be next. Trying to get you a shot of that. Air box is going to be next. Now, I did do a video on this vehicle, do a thermostat and a water pump. Uh, but the, what it actually was about, we had an issue where the filler neck right here broke. So, but that's neither here nor there right now. All this has to come apart. I'm not going to talk too much about it. I'm thinking I'm going to keep the camera rolling and later on edit if that's doable. I don't know how good that's going to work. I don't know if it'd be better to get a get it more elevated and do a top angle on it. I don't know. Uh, we're going to try something a little bit different than what, what I have been doing. Let's just see what we can do. Now, this is going to be like a bird's eye view. I get that. And... Uh, that may not be suitable. We're going to try this in this video. All we can do is try. A little hose down here, it's going to have to be unhooked. Let me know if you like the video this way or don't. Just careful with those vacuum lines. That vehicle is old enough now that could be deteriorated to some point. You definitely don't want to break anything. They're pretty good. Vacuum booster hose. Purge valve. Fuel line. I know I'm kind of all over the place. Careful, there may be some rest pressure on it. 
this has been sitting for a while. I, I very seriously doubt if there was any rest pressure, which obviously there was not. I used a half inch disconnect tool. Okay, so a real quick interruption. I do know I am well aware of the fact that there is some videos out there on YouTube where people actually take the head off by simply moving some stuff around and cutting the front gasket and all that good stuff. Now these engines, they all have leaks. I yet to work on one that didn't have a leak somewhere on the lower part or what not have you and besides that uh, when you're doing a head a head change on these on these things here you need to clean them up so it's a really stupid idea in my opinion to just take the head off of one of these things and not clean everything else up that's a really really silly idea so it's of course it's up to you it ain't nothing to me obviously but i'm just going to throw that in there this engine is coming out every part on it is going to get cleaned properly cleaned we're going to put new gaskets and all that good stuff because i'm not going to have a leaking engine for the customer after doing that much work Some of these little plugs are hard to get. Maybe not for some people, but I've always ended up struggling with some of them. Easier for me to use a little tool, carefully pry back on the end of it, get them released that way. He said battery has already been removed. sit on your intake manifold and that hooks up that one I'm going to be struggling with right, so I'm going to loosen everything up uh, that needs to be loosened right at the moment okay we got that one is a little bit difficult to get sometimes. They got lucky. Yeah, so now we're going to wrap around on the bottom side. So we've got connector going down to the AC. If you're worried about these plugs, location, whatever, uh, by all means mark them you know they do fall back into place so I personally don't see the need in them being marked so all of this is undone It's got a little bit of juice flowing. I don't want to pull that yet. Okay, all of that, all of that. One more here. One on the bottom. Oh yeah, come on, baby. Temp sensor. That one on the side, I hope the camera, yeah, you can see it. Uh, that one on the side is very important. That has to that has to go right back, I mean, back on correctly later on. That is your ground. And like I said, I can stress that enough. That's a very important uh, 
very important one to have back on there. That ground has got to go back on. Remember if we can get that on there or not. Uh oh. That's horse. Sizing, that is a Torx. I actually used eight millimeter to get it off of there. Uh, whatever. I just dropped that bolt. I'm not going to spend a lot of time addressing that bolt right now. Uh, at this point in time, everything that comes off on, on this end of it is off of it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and drain the coolant, pause you up. So right away, I removed the cowl on the underside, and of course the drain is over here. It's much easier to get to when you remove that cowl. It's just got a couple of uh, screws that's holding it in there, so it does make it easier. So we'll we'll get up, we'll take it out of there all the time. And of course, the coolant now has to drain out. God Almighty, you're always making a mess. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> I swear that never fails. But anyway, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say something and I'm gonna say it again and again and again. I know a lot of people don't wanna hear it, uh, so you get comments like, well, you talk too much, and I can't see this, I can't see that. I think on, on, in, the, in the world today, the entitlement has gone way, 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 way beyond what it really should be. I mean, everybody expects something for nothing. Uh, I can do this job much, much faster, not having to worry about camera angles and talking into the camera, you know, trying to record odd and end things. I can do this job 10 times faster. I don't need YouTube to run this business. We've original, or most people, they do that to, to share. Uh, I don't make enough off of YouTube to keep pumping these videos out there for people to say, well, I can't see this, or well, how did you do that? If you don't know the least bit on how to work on these vehicles, don't work on them. It's really that simple. You know, I want to keep saying that more and more often because it's, I think it's really getting out of hand what, what's going on in the world right now. As far as the entitlement is concerned, you know, uh, be a little bit appreciative that there's people that, that share stuff with you. You know, there's a lot of clowns out there that, mis that mislead you, uh, that do silly things like using radiator stop leak, or there's, well, never mind. I'm not going to name any channels, but you know, clickbait, throw a little bit of sex in there, you know, I don't do any of that. It's just pure and simple auto repair. I don't have no complaints from my customers. What I fix is fixed right every time, or it'll be done again, and that don't happen very often. I can tell you that right now. But anyway, moving on. Drain the coolant, I'm gonna let that drain pause you up. At this point in time, I don't know how far I'm gonna go with the wire. Uh, I did remove the front, uh, the AC compressor. I did remove those. I just realized the tripod is actually a lot higher than what I thought it was. There was an extra leg in there that kind of was, was hidden, sort of, kind of. Uh, anyway, you've seen me pull this earlier. I did one ahead, like I said, to disconnect these wires right here from the compressor. I think we can fold this around and don't have to go any further with it. There's one clip down here. 
I don't want to break it. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. So that gets that whole end right here out of our way. And I believe that should be okay for us to do what we need to do. I might tie the, oh, camera. I might tie our intake hose here. I might tie it off the side a little bit uh, so it don't get aggravating. So I'm gonna pause you up. Sometimes a little axe like that, they actually end up saving a lot of time. We're gonna have leakage here. I don't care. It never, ever, ever fails that you have some uh, cooling escape. We'll just have to mop it up and replace it later on as we go. Trying to be a little bit more gentle with that one. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it, if I get tired of working in the engine in the engine bay here, uh, that engine is the whole assembly is going to come out. I don't care. I know how quick I can do it, so that is a possibility. And it may have to. Honestly, I did not. I didn't even look it up. I've never, never done a head on these cars. Inside, inside the en engine compartment, that is. We changed plenty of the engines, but never, never really done a head. Open up service information. It might tell you. You're supposed to remove the assembly. That is a possibility. That joke's on me, if that's the case. That water elbow relatively easy to get off of here. The original thing that happened is uh, the water elbow broke. Now I don't know how long this vehicle was driven. Obviously long enough to burn a head gasket. Oh, that's the water elbow by the way. If I'm not mistaken, that is a doorman. Uh, now that we got that apart, uh, hmm. take a quick peek over here. Of course, we're going to have to worry about the front of the engine, but I'm not going to worry about that right this minute. We got everything else unhooked. If the uh, coolant obviously must have quit running down there, I'm going to go ahead and pause you people up and uh, get the bucket out from underneath, let the vehicle down a little bit more, and move on. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen absolute quickest video on YouTube guaranteed no talking this is where I'm at now all jokes aside uh, change of plans change of direction I ended up pulling the motor out of it because of the all the oil leaks and all the good stuff it had uh, this was actually a salvage engine it, it had the oil leaks before but you know they they kind of frown on you a little bit when you uh, uh, taking them apart and you know change stuff on them that you know that generally voids the warranty so that's why I don't I don't ever mess with them you know you just take them as is and unfortunately uh, this one here was just out of warranty too and uh, it in fact it did blow a head gasket and like I said we had a little change directions on this one to obviously to the point where we just pulled the motor out of it transmission out of it pull the whole whole assembly uh, I think, ah, wipe my hands off, I'm not touching the camera with it. Now that I flipped it, I'm gonna show you anyway. 
hope the camera can pick it up. I, I think I showed it before. Uh, the two center pistons, they were real shiny. So those two centers, they are the culprit. I have not looked at the block yet. I haven't cleaned that side yet. I'm going to put the pan on it uh, because this thing don't, because the tube and everything don't sit real good on the table, uh, you know, rather than building it up with, with wood, I figured I'd just go ahead and uh, put the put the pan on it. Plugged all the holes on the transmission. I'm going to flip her back over. Uh, plugged all the holes on the transmission. I've got plugs for every orifice on this thing. Uh, and uh, I stuck the whole entire because she was black when we started and I stuck the whole the whole transmission in the parts washer uh, I want to do a fluid change on it also so I'm not gonna hurt anything uh, matter of fact there's all right over there is all the other parts uh, everything that we can wash has been in the washer uh, the heads in there right now it's gonna sit uh, sit in there overnight uh, so it done actually got late on me didn't even realize how late it was but anyway it got late on me and uh, I played around with uh, uh, new hoist today well I added added a new hoist that one right there I got me something that's electric you know that makes more sense than my chain fall so now it, it's much easier for me to uh, lift stuff by myself but most of the time I'm by myself, it's kind of some things are kind of hard to do. Uh, in the future, I'm going to be replacing this god awful thing here with a with an actual remote remote, uh, make it even even more handy. But anyway, I'm going to cut the camera again, and definitely will bring you along when I seal it up tomorrow with the pan and clean everything up. And then I'm going to check the head. I got to check that head, and and we're going to give it a real 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 close look over and. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with the valves, you know, that uh, the customer don't want to do all that, but, uh, you know, that that, it, that was a possibility that was put on the table, uh, but like I said, we're not, we're not going to do that, so we're going to clean everything up like I've done many times before and nothing wrong with that, normally works and, and lasts a long time, so anyway, that's where I'm at. Oh yeah, there is, uh, by the way, I do have a uh, removal video on the channel, that's, that's the whole reason I didn't film it. All right, a little bit of an update. Clean the head up. Head's no good. The head's warped. Got a little bit of a linear warp in it, so it'll have to go to the machine shop or be replaced with a remanufactured unit, which uh, customer decided we're going to go with the remanufactured unit. Of course, that puts me in a hold up now because uh, uh, it's got to be shipped here. Nothing, nothing here in our area would have something like that. Not going to have it. Uh, we got about. Eight to nine thousand warp, and it's kind of a little bit on the sideways warp, so uh, I can't put it on. I got to take the phasers off of it, and uh, I'm going to give you a fair bit of warning. There's probably some people that, that think, "Oh, we can straighten that at home." No, you cannot. I mean, you might be able to straighten that head, but uh, the recommendation on on something like that is my recommendation. For one, as a as a decent decent uh, mechanic and also a machinist, I will tell you, you need to do valves. The, the valves need to be seated and all that good stuff. So no, I would not. I would requalify. I would have everything requalified and put together right because that straightening at, at home with a torch and all that horse crap that you see on on, on YouTube. Uh, no, don't do it. I mean, do what you want to, obviously, but don't. I recommend don't do it. It, it's not worth it. You're taking a chance. I don't care. I don't care how many people have done it and it's working. You're taking a chance. Uh, these engines right here, finicky, very, very finicky in in the first place. Uh, don't don't even make that attempt. But anyway, we're gonna continue on with the uh, the oil pan. The oil pan is next. I got all our our sealer. Let me grab that real quick. Let me grab it out of the bag. Got us a MicroGuard oil filter to start it up and run it for an hour. And then we'll switch it to the old Wix. That's my preferred one. And yes, I got it from O'Reilly, not a sponsor. So, whoa, whoa. I can give you a, I can give you a GM number for the 
Uh, they used to be uh, black. They used to use black RTV silicone. Now they use gray RTV silicone. Now this this here is the one that I'm going to use. That is a a better grade of gray silicone. It's better than the ultra the Permatex Ultra Gray. Not a sponsor. And then you're going to use the dielectric grease, the white lithium, or not lithium, silicone grease. You're going to use this grease right here on all the O-ring seals that you're putting into this engine. Uh, that, that is what GM recommends, or not, not this, but they recommend you to use a white silicon grease. And I can link part numbers if you want them. And they, of course, they have their own sealer. You can go to the dealer and uh, pay about 30 bucks for it, uh, for about a five ouncer. And the five ouncer you're not going to use is going to set up on me, so I opted to go this way. This is a little bit cheaper. Uh, yeah. Anyway, continuing on, we're going to move on with the, with like I said, with oil pan. That oil pan, I, I'm going to, I'm going to say it now, so don't even go to the talking part. You're going to have to have a lot. Well, you don't have to have alignment pins, but they make a set of alignment pins that can be ordered online if you if you want them. I'm not going to use them. Uh, or, or if I opt to go that route just to show you, I will make my own. So two, that, those are the two things that I want to talk about. Uh, the rest of the stuff can get prepped. I have no problem prepping some of the stuff, putting the front seal, uh, front seal in the front cover. We've got the. Uh, no, we can't put the can't put the uh, uh, water pump in it right yet, but. All of the all of the rest of it has been cleaned. It's all as clean as it's going to be here. Uh, the if you're pulling, if you're going to pull the oil pump, how the oil the oil pump, the oil filter housing off the block, which you should because that's a leaking item. This this is the gasket for it. Looks something like this. This is what I'm looking at here, completely flat. There's an O-ring here that you can also, it's readily available. Or, it may come with, that, not this one, but anyway, it may come with your headset that you ordered. This one is going to get a Felpro headset, 100%. I'm not messing around with anything else. Uh, I, I did, did a comparison, and honestly, I thought GM was the way to go. I think Felpro is one up on them. Uh, this is my opinion. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It's my opinion. Uh, anyway, we're going to take this block, flip it over, get it buckled back up to the transmission. Now you know all the steps, because that way I don't have to commentate on that later. I'm going to try to give you a peek on the underside of this right here. I hope I can hold that to where you can see it. It's been obviously been cleaned. Now what I did is I left all the bolts in there when I was taking it apart. I didn't take none of the bolts out. So you see all them bolts sticking out? They're all equal lengths and then you got the two uh, bigger bolts on the bottom side. You can't miss those but anyway these are these are going to stay as they are till I'm actually able to work on this this in the front right here that is your oil pump so to not make a mistake on that generally the to the best of my knowledge they don't go out so we should be good to reuse that like i said i've cleaned all that we're gonna to have to do some more surface cleaning obviously later and i'm not even going to do the seals on this one yet i will do that when the head gets here and is actually finally bolted up a little bit of surface prep on this surface here Of course, that was a pulling hole. Don't keep your panties on now. Check it this way. 
what I did here is I got me a magnet just to hold it, to help me hold it in place, I don't have to hold it. So that's a 1,000 shim, so we get a little bit of shim action right there. Nothing here. There is maybe a thou right there. Moving into the center. I'm not pushing on it. Nothing, 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 nothing. This one here is just barely pushing under. So we got about one thou variation on, on the deck of the block, and that's fine. That's within the limits. Combined, you get about 4,000 uh, between the, the cylinder block surface and the cylinder head surface. You got to combine 4,000 uh, total. And oh, that does not mean that you can have four here and none on the other. No, that's not what that means. That just means I'm just giving you some clearances. That's all I'm all I'm doing. Oh, we got a little bit, a little bit here. We could address that. Uh, but it, it's within the tolerance. I did hit the inside the cylinder a little bit with a fine hone, give that a little bit of roughness. We're gonna uh, go ahead and flip that over and work on the pan. The best bet is to have a significant amount of, or a significant stock in shop towels and all that good stuff because you're gonna need a lot of them. Uh, cleanliness is your best bet on all this. Uh, I've seen too many times where uh, RTDs, sealers, and all that good stuff didn't work on account of there still being oil. You know, we have to remove we have to remove the oily film. That's just always to it. There's always going to be some amount coming off of it. You're not going to keep that uh, from happening. Now, anyway, getting back to silicone, I'm going to explain that one time, one time only. The factory want you to put a bead close to the inside and if you pay attention you can see your outline you don't want to get into no gallery holes or anything like that but we're going to go around the outside where the original bead used to be and they want you as I said to line this this pan up uh, we can do that ideally you're going to match up on the back side here. You take the flywheel off of it, and we might still still do that. Let me pause you up. One more time, those of you who watch my channel, you'll know. I'm going to say this for the last time, I believe. These little brushes for the drill. Get them at Harbor Freight, not a sponsor. The box has sizes for just about everything, so there you go. We're going to clean that up. We're going to need some guides. Uh, I held it up there, and the best way to go is with some guides. I'm not going to even try to, try to explain it to you the other way. Get the angle down a little bit. So if you have a buddy that's got a lathe, or if you're lucky enough to have a lathe yourself, I did this right there. Oh, the camera, cam, camera, camera can focus in on that or not. Anyway, I put a little slot in it, polish it up with some Amory. These are just under eight mil. This fits perfect through these holes. Run a drill bit backwards if you need to. You didn't see a damn, damn gone thing. I uh, just did. But I'm using these two holes right here. This is nearly a perfect alignment. They, you don't want them body fit. These are guides. Okay, that goes on this part of the, uh, the block. Like I said, at just under eight millimeter. You're going to want to be in a spot where you can get to it with a screwdriver. Don't use the tall spots. <clears throat> you also have a long screwdriver. But anyway, if there's one. Got one more to make. Of course, I showed that in previous videos. I do have my lathe over there, so I'm not going to film that part. But anyway, I got one more to make.
a little bit too tight, do a little bit more polishing, 